And welcome everybody to Osh Hall Stadium as we take on the Washington State Cougars, a fellow Air Raid team from the Pac-12. And we're coming off a really nice win against Colorado State in the previous game, but these guys are a lot better than Colorado State, so we're going to have to play our A game once again in order to come out with the win. We also have the one-star guard from Toronto, Canada coming to visit us today in Michael Underwood. He's the last person on our recruiting board that we're going after. So if we can get him to sign after this game, then we can start going after one-star guys that are outside the neighboring states of Minnesota as we can only go after one-star. So hopefully he's impressed enough to sign with us after this week. But now it is time to get this football game underway as Cooper is going to drop back to pass. He's going to throw over the middle quickly to Eric Edwards for an easy 15-yard gain. You know, this air raid is pretty famous, probably one of the better air raids in the country. And so we got a lot of work to do, especially when the quarterback can scramble just like that. You know, he picked up the first down with his legs too, and not to mention these quick passing routes don't even give us an opportunity to even touch this quarterback. So we could be on a long day if we don't figure it out. So first and 10, Cooper. Up the left hand side to Cole the Bolts for a five yard gain. You know, just these quick hitters, you know, death by a thousand cuts. And that's definitely what they have planned is they've just, they haven't gone remotely deep yet. And, you know, we're definitely paying for it right now as Cooper, he's going to throw to the right hand side and he's going to get to first down courtesy of Cassidy Woods picking up that 12 yard gain. Next play, Cooper going to the left. DeBoats going into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Cougars as they're going to go ahead 7 to nothing. The mascot loves it. We certainly don't. But now it's our time to strike back as Walden. He's going to drop back. He's going to scramble. He's going to nearly pick out the first down with the legs as, you know, Walden's got that nice mobility, and Adrian Thompson. Coming with a catch. I thought that was going to be picked off, but thankfully we got saved there. So it'll still be a first regardless. Next play, Wallen's going to throw to his left, trying to get it to Kevin Stone. And there just was a miscommunication as it was just was not there whatsoever. But Kevin Stone's there on that play as he's able to make a tough catch for seven yards on that play. So here we go, third and three, going to try to get the read option going here. As Wallen's going to go up the middle, he's going to keep it himself and pick up the first. Got to love the mobility of this kid. As now first and ten after that, third down conversion. Going to try to throw it up the middle to Mark McDaniel, who had it in his hands, but he drops it. So now we got second and ten on our hands. We're going to try to throw to left, and Adrian Thompson takes a shot lit up like a Christmas tree but is able to hold on regardless. And then there's John Christensen picking up the first down. First carry of the game, going for nine yards. Pretty nice. So now first and 10, Wallen's going to drop back. He's going to throw it to Christensen up the middle, and he's going to pick up the first and a lot more. As for some reason, Desi Lindsay's going to come up on screen, but it's whatever. We pick up the first, and we got ourselves a drive, ladies and gentlemen. So now, first and 10, basically first and goal here. This time we're going to throw it once again to John Christensen. He's going to get it to about the four and gets us a lot closer to getting into this end zone here. And now second and four, we're going to try to run up the gut with Desi Lindsay. He makes a nice, great run for us as he's able to pick up the touchdown. And now we tied this game up at seven. But let's see if we can do any better with this air raid as it's thrown to the right-hand side. Nice throw to Cassie Woods, actually. He's picking up five. And then Cooper, he's going to drop back. He's going to actually run with it. Got a bunch of green grass and is going to slide on down, picking up a bunch of yards in the process. Next play, Washington State dropping back the pass. Going to look to his right. and That's a nice slant over the middle to Tra Travell Harris. Another easy 20 yards for the man. So now, another first and 10. They are driving very quickly once again as we simply have no answers. As now they're throwing multiple guys off them. 
It's been a pretty rough day for our defense so far. But now tied at seven. Going to be a throw to the left to Travell Woods. And somehow Chad Parrish fights through the tackle. Is able to hold him just shy of the first down marker. Slow him down just a little bit. Very nice. Second and inches though. Going to throw to the right hand side to Baragi. He's going to fight through a man. But Marv Santana is going to eventually bring him out of bounds at about the five. So it's going to be a first and goal coming up here as Cooper's going to throw over the middle to Cassidy Woods. He's going to pick up another touchdown, his second on the day, and we're down by seven again. So we go free and out on our previous drive. So you see the Cougars back on the field again, and it could have been a big run there, but we got bailed as he dropped that one. Next play, though, Cooper is set in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Baragi. It's their first run, and it's going to go for a massive run, and he has green grass around him, and we are down 21-7 to all of a sudden. Things are not looking too good out here. As now third and two, we need to pick up this first down here. Trying to run the read, but John Christensen gets stuffed up the middle on that read. And so we are going to have to punt it away to these Cougars as Greg Whittle is going to punt it to this Washington State team. And he's able to find some blockers. He might go for all the distance, but he's going to bring it out to the 50 regardless. They have great field position to work with going forward. All right, so now Washington State is back on the field with great field position to work with as the boat's going to get the... Uh, quick throw we had a linebacker on him you know it just shows that we're simply not fast enough as a defense and it's definitely killing us early on as now Cooper he has all day to throw he could have made himself a sandwich before he did anything but regardless it does was dropped immediately and it does fall to a second and three a couple plays later here comes Gray picking up the short throw and it's gonna go for the first and that's the end of the first quarter already, and man, things have been tough. Washington State's been able to march up and down the field, and it has been a problem. So now, first play of the second quarter. Cooper with all day to throw. He's going to launch it deep to Harris. He's going to pick up another touchdown. That's Cooper's third touchdown pass already, and we're down 28-7. So now we got to pick up some points on our own here as Wallen's going to go up the gut. It's a nice run for 12 for a first down for your Tommies. Next play, Wallen, he's going to hand it off to Christensen. He's going to move up and down. Going to get a nice nine yards up the gut for that young man. So now a couple plays later, we're looking at a third and two. Going to run another read option and Wallen's going to pick up the first and so much more. It's a gain of 11 on that play. You got to love the mobility, but we got to finish these drives regardless as Walden dropping back. Going to get it to Kevin Stone, but he gets lit up like a Christmas tree. He's going to drop it for the incompletion. So now we're facing a second and 10 coming up here as Walden's going to drop back to the pass. And it's a terrible throw that was supposed to go to Kevin Stone. It was just a bad throw. And we're going to pay for it as Washington State will now have the ball back once again as Cooper gets it to Baragi. Baragi's going to take multiple guys with him, but Chad Parrish will eventually bring him down. Next play, Cooper going up the middle with Baragi. And Baragi, I'm surprised, did not cut right. He had a lot more space, but we are not complaining. That could have been another touchdown. But can we stop them from getting any more points in this half? As Cooper gets hung up and we're able to get to the quarterback. That's the first sack as Corey Ford was able to really uh, confuse the offensive line somehow and gets the sack. So now we got him a second along. This might be the turning point that we need. But it does turn into a 15-yard gain. So they got all that yardage back and then some. You hate to see it. So now third and free, we got to get a stop here. And they throw it away early on in the play action. So it looks like we actually will make them settle for a field goal. So we make them settle for a field goal, but we find ourselves down by a lot. And we throw another interception. Oh, no. you We did not need that whatsoever. As Chad Davis 
was able to undercut it and now they have great field position this could get out of hand quickly as harris is going to get into the end zone but wait there's a flag on the play it's illegal touching we just got bailed on that one so now second and 15 after the penalty cooper's going to drop back and throw to his left and there is jeff outlaw staring the man down and making the tackle so now it's third and very long, 19 to go as he's going deep and it's nearly intercepted by Corey Fitzpatrick. Would have loved to see the interception, but we will make them try for a very long field goal attempt here. And it's way wide left, so it's a good stand for our defense. We needed that. So now, Wallen dropping back, trying to try to get it out, but he's sacked before he can even have time to read. So now it is very long. Second and 17 coming up here. Going to try to get it to Christensen. And he's brought down. So now we got a long third down coming up here. And we need. We need this extremely badly. As we try to throw to Kevin Stone for the first. And he's able to pick it up for us. Time to get the Tommies into a no huddle. As we really need to make up this deficit badly. It's John Christensen going up the middle. It's a gain of 10. He's able to pick up another first down. You love to see it, ladies and gentlemen. As now Walden dropping back the pass. He's going to try to get it to Christensen again, but he just needs to calm down the feet because he had him open. So now, third and, sec third and nine, excuse me. We're going to get it to Christensen, and he's thought he was able to pick up the first, but we're going to be just shy. And look at this. The coordinators do not want to go for it. So we're going to settle for a field goal attempt here. As it is drilled. And it's a really nice field goal. But we are still down by 21. So now Cooper has a minute and 30 to go. Till the end of the first half. We really need to stop, stop here. Because our offense is simply struggling right now. As Cooper, he's going to drop back, survey the field, go over the middle to Edwards. And he's able to get it past midfield and a little bit more. As Washington State moves into their coveted no-huddle attack, we are simply struggling and we need to slow them down. But it looks like Gray, he's going to get another first down there. These short routes are killing us. We haven't had it on aggressive zone coverage, so we're up in the bottom line of scrimmage, but they're still killing us regardless and Cooper is batted down at the line of scrimmage so we get an incompletion there so next play Cooper's gonna drop back he's gonna throw to his left to Edwards he's able to break a couple of guys down he's gonna be forced out of bounds in the red zone Washington State looking to get some more points so hopefully we can at least just hold him to a field goal but it looks like those dreams are diminishing quickly as Baragi he's able to get by the first down marker he picked up eight there and then on this second and two cooper's gonna drop back he's gonna throw a dart to the back of the end zone nobody to account for him and we're now down 38 to 10 so we are down by 28 we're gonna try to go over the middle to mark mcdaniel he's able to get a bunch of yards for us it's a 41 yard gain that's our biggest play of the day so now moving into the no huddle even more we're surveying the field. We're trying to get to Mark McDaniel, and he can't make the catch. It was a tough one, but you would love to see him make that catch regardless. So now, Walden dropping back. Going to get it to Kevin Stone, and it's good. No corner almost read it perfectly. So now, first and ten. Going to run the play action here. Going to throw it to the corner to Kevin Stone, and he gets the ten toes down. Part of that ten toes down movement. So now, another first and ten coming up. Jesse Walden dropping back the pass. He's looking. He's going to try to throw it to the end zone. And it looks like somebody interfered with him. Let's see what it is. It is an interference. So we're going to get it on the two. So we just got to get a couple more yards, and we can cut this to a free possession game again as Mark McDaniels drops the touchdown pass. You hate to see it. All right, so now third and goal. We still have two more yards to get. Can we get it here as Thompson is stood up? We were so freaking close. But it looks like once again, our coordinators don't want to go for it here on fourth down. So we're just going to take the points and go into the locker room. We are currently down 38-13. to 13. 
But I think we do get the ball to start the second half. So at least we have that to build off of going forward. Okay, so we do have the ball to start the second half. First play, Wallen's going to throw deep over the middle to Chad McKenzie. And McKenzie makes a fantastic catch. That goes for 31 yards. You love to see it. As now Jesse Wallen, he's going to drop back on the throw over the middle to Mark McDaniel. He makes another catch for 14 yards on that play. As Tommies are looking good coming out of the locker room. But can we finish with a touchdown here as we throw it to Mark McDaniel again? And he makes it first and goal for us, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're running the no huddle. We're going to try to get him off balance here. As we're going to try to get the Christensen and he's stuffed at the one. Hopefully we can get it here in this next couple of plays. So now it's up to Desi Lindsay. Can he get it in the end zone? He's going to be stuffed. And we're going to have to settle for another field goal. Thankfully for us, though, they do go free and out here. So we do have a chance to cut into this lead. As Kevin Stone makes another difficult catch. He's really been improving his game as of late. Jesse Wallen's going to go over the middle to Mark McDaniels. He's going to nearly pick up the first. Hopefully we get it on this next play regardless. So now, read option. Going to go to the left. Jesse Wallen, he's got some green grass. Can he get to the end zone? He's going to be at the one yard line we were so close but now we got a third and goal we are in danger of this drive stalling and it's gonna indeed stall out once again we have to settle for our third field goal inside the five as cooper goes over the middle to brandon gray he picks up the first down right there or not the first but it was really close they'll probably pick it up here in Nearly, I don't know how he managed to get it through three Tommies, and he almost caught it too. That should have been picked off, but I guess that's that Heisman cheese really showing right now. Is Baragi? He's going over the middle, the gut, and that is going to be an easy first down once again. Just having troubles getting stops on third down. You hate to see it. As Cooper dropping back, he can make another sandwich if he wants, and he finds Harris streaking down the left hand side. And it's going to be a big first down once again as Cooper's going to drop back. He's going to throw another deep ball to Cassidy Woods who makes a diving grab. And it goes for a gain of 18. And now second and goal. It's Cooper dropping back to pass. Throw into his right to Brandon Gray. And that's going to be another touchdown. So the bad news for us is that we go free and out on our next drive. So it's in a dangerous position to get even uglier than it already is right now as Baragi gets another catch for another first down. These underneath routes, man, they are just killing us, and we nearly got another interception. Jeff Outlaw was there, but he decided to swat at it. But we do slow him down temporarily. So next play, Cooper is going to throw his right, and there's Roderick Fisher. I didn't know if he got his feet in down or not, but the refs say he did. I'm not going to question it. Because uh, they're usually right, unfortunately. In this game and Gray, we nearly get to the quarterback finally. But he finds Brandon Gray just in time. And so it sets up a goal-to-go situation, which will be completed. Baragi gets to the end zone there. Okay, so we really need to get some points on the board. And Kevin Stone picks up a dart as he is down. So hopefully he is okay because he's having a heck of a game, actually. Not going to lie. But now, first and ten, we're looking to the right again. This time, it's Adrian Thompson. He makes a great catch, too. And it's another first down. We are killing him with the corner strike. Because now, Jonathan Marks, our backup free safety. He's got some excellent hands, too, in his own right. He's able to pick up six. But here we are in the third quarter. Hopefully, we can at least finish strong. I doubt we're going to be able to come back and win this game at this point. All right, so here we go. The goal is to finish strong. We're going to try to throw over the middle, and we are so lucky that it wasn't intercepted. It was thrown right at him. But now third and four. We're going to try to convert here. Wallen's going to throw to Chad McKenzie. He's able to get up field, and he gets into the red zone again. Tommy's looking to score on in the first couple of minutes of this first or final quarter of play as Adrian Thompson makes another great catch. 
but he'll also go down. Hopefully, he'll be okay as the defensive end almost intercepts it on the next play. Like, he drops it. He doesn't have that all state. So now, second and goal. Walden, he's going to drop back the pass. He's going to throw it to uh, Christensen. And off the screen, he's able to get into the end zone. And so we find ourselves only down by 26. As now, Gray going picks up eight yards there on that little play right there. So now, second and two. Washington State is slowing it down because, you know, they have the big lead. No need for the no huddle. And there's Brandon Gray once again picking up number 15. A couple of plays later, Cooper's going to drop back in the shotgun. He's going to throw it over the middle to Brandon Gray again. This time it only goes for a handful of yards, though. So now third and four. Cooper's going to drop back to pass. He's going to throw a dart over the middle. Right hand side to Fisher. And that's just another dagger in what has been a long day for this Tommy's defense. Washington State has put up 59 points. It might get worse as Walden goes down for the sack. And now we have to punt this ball back to the Cougars. It's not looking good whatsoever. And it's not a great punt either. So hopefully our defense can make a stop. And unfortunately, you know, it was not great punt return coverage. As now Washington State, one of the better offenses in the country, will get the ball at our own 30-yard line. So hopefully our defense can make another stand, you know, at least a small moral victory that we can take from this as Harris picks up eight. Next play, Cooper in the shotgun. He's looking around. I don't know how he was able. Such an off-platform throw. And it was still a perfect throw regardless. What the heck is that? Like, we haven't set a 20 quarterback accuracy on the sliders. And they still got that off. And they're going to get the touchdown anyway. And, you know, Cooper, you know, got to give it to him. He's having a great day. He has the new school record for most passing touchdowns in a game. And... That's actually going to wrap it up. We got our backups in for the last few minutes, and nothing too crazy happened in those final few minutes, but we got absolutely crushed out here. We lost by 40, and, you know, you just hate to see it losing in that kind of fashion. Checking out the stats for today's game, we actually did a pretty solid job in between the 20s. We just couldn't get in the end zone when we really needed to. Jesse Wallen was our starting quarterback today. He was 29 for 53 with over 300 yards passing. Got that touchdown, but also threw two picks, which also put us in a bad spot. Desi Lizzie came in relief towards the end of the game, and he was 0 for 4 as well. Running game, we kind of avoided the running game today since we were down so much so early. They just put the hurting on us. Jesse Wallen, though, led us today. He had 10 carries for 54 yards, but Desi Lindsay had our only touchdown on the ground today. He had two attempts for three yards. Our receivers, you know, definitely got a lot of action today, and, you know, slow but surely we're getting better every single day. Adrian Thompson, one of the few seniors on this roster, he led us with seven catches but Mark McDaniel, a true freshman, however, he had 86 yards, which led all St. Thomas receivers with the only passing touchdown that Jesse Wallen throw went to John Christensen. Finally, our defense got burnt up quite a bit today, but we did have a few bright spots. Chad Parrish, our true senior, one of the few seniors that we have on the team, you know, led us with seven total tackles today. And then Roger Bryant, you know, haven't really said his name much this season. Uh, he had two TFLs, which led all Tommies. Blake Perry, Jeff Outlaw, and Corey Ford also all got into the backfield at some point. And then Corey Ford, he actually, actually had our only sack today, but we did not force any turnovers, so we still got to work on that. But even though things were really rough on the field, we did get... The last person on our recruiting board that was a one star within either the state of Minnesota or a neighboring state of Minnesota and Michael Underwood. He is a guard and while he probably won't play much at all the first season, if he even makes it uh, on the roster the first season, you know, he can at least give us some depth at that position. You know, we just got to develop him as a player. All right, guys. So next time out, since we got all the people that we signed off the board, I'm going to 
kind of look around and see whatever guys I want to sign uh, as we move fur further out because we can do that once we sign all the people that are within our restrictions for our you know for the rest of our board and then I'm probably going to either play this game off screen or simulate this game because this game can I get has a feeling of getting extremely ugly just like the Washington State games so you know so I'll let you guys know what happens with that next time out but you know if, if that's the case you know next time around we're gonna go and play I think Tulane is next yeah we're gonna play Tulane and then after that we only have one more game in Iowa so season two is coming to a close real quick thank you guys so much for tuning in though make sure you smash that like button if you haven't done so already hit me up in the comments as well as hit that subscribe button if you are brand new to the channels I truly appreciate it I'll see you guys next time with some more college gaming content, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.